am so excited you're here because I have several truly high-end Dollar Tree farmhouse DIYs that I know you're gonna love and I also use some household items that I was just gonna throw in the trash. If that's something you're interested in, then just keep watching. Okay friends, for DIY number one, we're gonna start with this unfinished wood round from Dollar Tree and I start off by cutting the hanger off of it. Next, I'm going to fill in the holes with some hot glue and I just take my Chalk Couture squeegees to make sure that those holes are nice and filled up as well as the hot glue is not bubbled up on the sign. Next, I'm going to take a piece of painter's tape at the bottom, and I didn't measure this or anything. I just kind of eyeballed how big I wanted the bottom piece to be. So I just marked it off with the painter's tape and then give it a distress coat of my ink Waverly chalk paint. And little disclosure, my seven, my seven month old is right here with me. So if you hear him, he is eating it is what it is mom life <laughs> sorry not sorry but you got to do what you got to do right so anyway once my bottom piece was painted then I'm going to take my blow dryer and make sure that it's nice and dry and then pull my tape up I'm going to use the exact same piece of tape if you want to use a new piece you totally can but I just kind of flipped it around to the side that was not painted on and then I taped it off and this part originally i was going to paint this with white waverly chalk paint and then i thought that it would look really cool to do more of like a whitewash so i just put a little bit of white paint in a different container with some water mix that up to water it down and then i started to paint my sign now it was just a little too light for my liking so i kind of brushed on the uh, whitewash and then dipped in my white paint and just went over the whitewash so that it all mixed together until my eyes were happy if you do not like that look then you can totally give it a good coat of white paint I'm going to tape off the bottom part once again just because the white had kind of seeped into the black and I didn't like the way that that edge looked so I just taped it once again and painted it with my ink Waverly chalk paint to make that line nice and crisp. Next I'm going to take my chip brush and some of my antique wax by Waverly and I'm going to start by dry brushing all the way around the edges and then I'm going to give it a light distressing in the middle of the sign as well. Now it was just a little bit too light for me so I actually grabbed my bigger chip brush that I get from Home Depot. Once again dipped it in my antique wax. I dabbed off the excess and then I'm going to dry brush all the way around this this white part of the sign and then I also turn my brush um, like up and down and then kind of make some marks that way it just kind of gives it a more realistic look next I'm going to take these transfers that I got from Amazon I'm going to cut them apart and then for the bottom part I'm going to transfer on the truck now that the back of the truck had a little chicken on it which was so cute but I wanted you to be able to see the truck and the chicken so I taped off the bottom part of the chicken I used my chalk paste my black chalk paste for the top of the chicken and then I removed the tape and I transferred on the rest of the truck and the bottom of the chicken with my white paste. Then I'm going to peel back my transfer to reveal this gorgeous image. Now I have to say you guys, these Amazon transfers are much like the old Chalk Couture transfers. Recently we just had a transfer change where they um, improved our transfers and these are just like the old ones which there was nothing wrong with them um, but we are always trying to improve the products. So I do enjoy the new transfer style these days but these ones from Amazon are still really really good so once I was done with the bottom part then I transferred on the welcome to or 
yeah welcome to and then i don't know why this transfer did not have the it it was boggling my mind i'm like am i missing something here <laughs> you guys i could not figure it out um but it didn't have it so i transferred on the welcome to farmhouse and then i also took the from a different transfer and transferred that on on the left side of the wording now on this other transfer that i used the word the it had these little greenery pieces so i transferred those on underneath farmhouse farmhouse with my pesto chalk paste and let that dry next i'm going to dig into my stash of ribbons now y'all looking at this sign editing i th i think the ribbon was okay um but i did not really like it um i ended up taking it off you're gonna see that here in just a second but i did go ahead and use this black and white ribbon with the greenery on it from amazon to make a simple bow just by folding it into like the shape of a cancer ribbon if you will and then i tied that in the middle with my jute i cut dovetails on the ends and then glued that down to the top of my sign Next, I take this eucalyptus from Walmart, and if you guys have been around for any length of time, then y'all know that I absolutely love Walmart's florals. This pick, it had four different picks on it, and they were only 97 cents, and they look so realistic. But anyway, that was <laughs> that's besides the point. I cut the picks apart and then I put two on each side making sure to bend the picks so that they fit along the sides of the sign and then like I said I switched out the ribbon for a solid color with a smaller burlap ribbon right in the middle and I absolutely love the way that this turned out I can't wait to hear what you guys think of DIY number one down in the comment section below Hey y'all, so if you're enjoying this video, I would greatly appreciate if you would share it out. It really helps my channel to grow and helps YouTube to notice me a bit more. And if you haven't already, I would love to have you a part of my crafty family by just clicking that red subscribe button and then to be notified of all of my videos, tap the bell to all and you should be notified. YouTube does whatever it wants sometimes. But anyway, with that being said, I just want you to know how much I love and appreciate you. I also go live every single night to get to know you guys and that way you can get to know me a little bit more so with that being said let's jump back into today's video Moving on to DIY number two. Now this is a smaller wood round from Dollar Tree. This one has the raised word home on it. And I start by taking off the hanger and then staining all of the sign except for the wording as best as I possibly could with my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain. Next, I'm going to give the wording two good coats of my white Waverly chalk paint, making sure to be super careful and not get any of the white paint on the part that is stained. Now I did go ahead and do one layer of white Waverly chalk paint and then I made sure it was super dry with my blow dryer and then gave it a second coat. Next, I'm going to dig in my stash, and y'all, I this took me several minutes to figure out the perfect transfer because I knew that I was going to have to kind of transfer around that word. Originally, I was going to try to use the barn that I got from Amazon, but I just did not like the way that it fit. So I had this barn from Chocotour for years, you guys. This is actually one of my all-time favorite transfers that they have ever made 
made and as you can see this transfer is well loved um, and I just thought that it would be perfect for this sign so I lay it over my sign right above the home and then I transfer on the first layer with my white chalk paste Next, I'm going to make sure that that is really dry once again with my blow dryer and then do the second layer with my gold chalk paste. Next, I'm gonna peel back that transfer to reveal this crisp, gorgeous image. And this is exactly why I love transfers, you guys. It is so quick, it's so easy. It takes the thought out of it. You don't have to deal with technology, which is my favorite part. And when you peel back that image to reveal or when you peel back the transfer, I should say, to reveal the image, it is a feeling that I could do over and over again. I cannot get enough of it. If you guys have ever used transfers, let me know down in the comments. Do you guys like Cricut or would you stick with transfers for the most part because of how easy it is? And literally within about 10 minutes, you have this gorgeous DIY number two. Okay, y'all, moving on to the last and final DIY. So I have been wanting to do this DIY for so long. I absolutely love oatmeal. If you guys have joined my lives or you follow me on Instagram, then you know that oatmeal is like my favorite food. I don't know why I'm just addicted to it. And so I have went through so many of these containers. And again, this idea has been on my mind for a very long time. So I'm gonna start by taking my oatmeal container and ripping off the label. Next, I'm going to take this contact paper. I'm going to measure it out to size for my container and cut it down and then apply it to my container. Now, I went through all of my items in my stash. I could not find anything for the top of this silo. If you haven't guessed, that's what we're making yet. Um, and so I remember that I had these tiny little bowls in my kitchen. Don't freak out, y'all. This bowl was like 97 cents from Walmart. It was no big deal to use it. I can always go back and get another one. Plus, I have several others. But it was just absolutely perfect for the top of this. And it it looked perfect so I knew that I could use it with no issues so I glued it to the top of my plastic lid and then I set that aside next I'm gonna take a paper towel roll I'm also going to measure out a piece of contact paper and apply that to my paper towel roll Now the trick with contact paper that I have found, you're going to want to pull the backing away from the front piece because if you go to try to pull the front piece from the back piece, you're going to end up ripping your contact paper. So I have just found that the easiest way to do it is to go in the or get your corner started and then pull the back away from the actual contact paper. So once I have my paper towel holder or paper towel roll, I should say, completely covered, then I'm going to paint the top of my bowl. That way, this Fusion all-in-one hammered silver spray paint will stick to it really nicely. And my little girl was out here, she says hi. And then I go ahead and give this two good coats of this hammered spray paint. Next, I take my gray chalk paste and I'm going to start by just going over those lines that were already on the contact paper on the paper towel roll as well as the oatmeal container. If you ever look at real silos, they also have lines on them. So I wanted to make this look as realistic as possible. And then when I was done making the lines on both of the pieces. Then I'm gonna go to the top of my bowl and I'm gonna make lines on that as well just by creating like X's at the top so that way my lines were completely perfect when I went down the sides of my bowl, if that makes sense. Thank you. 
Now on the side of silos, that tube that you see is for the feed to come down. So the top piece has a bit of an opening and once again, I couldn't really figure out what to put on there. So I just cut a piece of scrapbook paper into the shape of a U. And if you need to run it back and see the exact shape that I used, you can totally do that. And then I folded it on top of each other and glued it together and then glued it on top of the paper towel roll. Next I'm going to paint that piece of paper with my metallic silver paint that I got from Walmart. Now to make this galvanized metal look realistic, I'm going to take a sponge from Dollar Tree in the bath section and cut it into four. Then I'm going to take my Elephant Waverly chalk paint and I quickly realized that I needed to remove that side piece to be able to cover it correctly. I should have thought of that, but I didn't. <laughs> you live and you learn. But I just removed that piece and then I'm going to dab my sponge into the paint, dab off most of the excess and then dab it all the way around my silo. Now you do not want to be too, too heavy handed because you still want that silver spray paint and the lines to shine through. But essentially what this does is just tone down that super silver color. And then once I'm done with the gray color and I'm satisfied with the way that it looks, again, use your own judgment and your eyes. Do this until your eyes are happy. And then once I was satisfied, then I did the exact same thing with some white Waverly chalk paint. But when you do the white, you want to go a lot less with the white. And that's just going to give off that galvanized look. Now don't worry if you do too much of the white. If that's the case, just go back in with your Elephant Waverly chalk paint and just go over the, the spots that are too much. And you'll see what I'm talking about. If you guys do this technique, you will definitely see what I mean when you do it. It's kind of one of those things that you have to see it to believe it, if you will. Um, but I absolutely love this technique. I have been doing this for a very, very long time, and it just gives that perfect galvanized metal look. So once I was satisfied with the way that my pieces looked, then I'm going to take my Waverly Antique Wax and I'm just going to make rust on my pieces, or I should say faux rust. Now it usually rusts on the edges first. So I start off by just dabbing my sponge right around all of the edges and then kind of blending that out with the dry piece of my sponge. Once again, you can do this to your liking. I just kind of randomly dab in places that I think look good. Um, but once again, you can do it to your liking. Once I was done with the side piece, then I moved on to the silo itself. I started off at the top edges and then worked my way down the silo. Now about halfway through doing the bottom of the silo, I did go ahead and glue back on the feeder piece or I should say the faux feeder piece just so that way I could kind of get a gauge of what it looked like and then I went ahead and finished my faux rust. Next I'm going to take two houses from Dollar Tree. These are the doll houses that you can find in the kids section or I should say the toy section and I take them out of the packaging, throw away the little furniture pieces 
and then I'm going to cut off the little sides. These dollhouses are made, that way you can kind of connect them together, but I'm going to put them together as one house. So I cut those pieces off, and then I'm going to cut a Jenga block in half, and I'm going to glue each half bottom of the house with some weld bond and then I'm going to clamp the wood pieces to the house that way they stay and glue together really nicely and then once those were completely dry then I'm going to put my house together I remove the clamps then I'm going to take this strand of lights and I always turn them on to make sure that they work correctly and I have these in my Amazon shop I believe but I get these from Amazon and I glue down the battery pack that way I can make sure that I can open the door and turn it on and off because we're going to glue these houses together like I said and I wanted to make sure that I could turn on the battery pack on and off so I just glue that down right on the side of the door and then I'm going to use my hot glue and my squeegee to glue down the lights at the top and at the bottom. Now you're probably wondering why I added the Jenga blocks and it's for this reason right here. So these houses are super cheap and super thin. So I wanted to make sure that I had something to hold them together nicely. So I put them together and then I'm going to glue the seam with my weld bond and then use a different type of clamp to clamp them together and let the glue dry but you're going to see here in a minute that I quickly realized that this was not a surefire way to get this to hold together. So once the glue was semi dry, then I took the clamp off of it and I took this scrap piece of wood that I had laying around. Y'all, I honestly do not, I don't even know where this piece of wood came from, but it actually ended up being like the perfect size to fit at the top of this house. So I just measure out how long I need the piece for the top of the roof. I cut it down with my miter shears and then I hot glue that to the top of my house after I sanded the edge smooth. this is the fun part you guys you can customize this little farmhouse however you like I personally want to have a black roof black shutters and white siding so that is how I did my house I painted the black roof or, oh my gosh you guys <laughs> All I want for Christmas is to have my lips move as fast as my brain does. <laughs> so I painted the roof with my ink Waverly chalk paint. I also painted all of the shutters and the details at the bottom of the house with my ink Waverly chalk paint. And then the brick I painted with my elephant waverly chalk paint the door and the little detail under the window on the right side of the house i painted with my moss waverly chalk paint and you guys this is where i realized that i royally screwed up so please do me a favor and paint the inside of your house before you put it together because you can totally see this pink color and all of the colors of the windows and the door the green the purple and the pink you can really see that <laughs> when you have the lights on when it's finished so do not make the same mistake that i did because 
it was driving me crazy and there was absolutely nothing I could do if I ripped all of these pieces apart it would have ruined the whole thing so I just left it and figured that I would just tell you guys not to make the same mistake I did I have no problem leaving in my mistakes because I am not a perfect crafter at all I make mistakes all the time and it just is what it is it's a part of the process and it's a good thing that I'm the guinea pig that way you guys can have a much better time than I do but anyway in order to paint my door I did have to stick a skewer through the window and hold my door shut because when I was painting it it just wanted to flap around so that's another pro tip as well so once I was done painting my house then I'm going to take this windmill from Dollar Tree. I'm going to cut the tag off and remove that welcome sign at the bottom. It came off really easily. I just, um, you know, fooled with it and it came right off. Then I spray painted it once again and did the same process that I did with our silo and I glued that to the back of our house. Now look how gorgeous this turned out you guys. I absolutely love this DIY. I cannot wait to hear which DIY was your favorite down in the comment section below. I also wanted to thank each and every one of you who have been so patient with me. My upload schedule is a little wonky y'all having a breastfed baby is something that I was not prepared for and as a mom I put my kids first so I'm just doing the best that I can and I just wanted to thank you guys for sticking with me with that being said if nobody has told you today you are absolutely stunning you are worthy you are gorgeous you can literally do anything you set your mind to coming from an addict who is nine years sober if I can do it I know that you can do it as well with that being said I also wanted to mention I go live every single night if you guys want to get to know me a little bit better and just have a chit chat have a supportive community y'all our late night chats are something that I am so grateful for and I would love to have you guys join so make sure that you have your bell set to all if you want to be notified of that I also just recently lost 80 pounds of pure fat and I also make money building a brand on social media, growing my social medias, and I teach other people how to do the same. So if you guys want any information, text my number, the word biz. I would love to help you change your financial future. I actually just picked out a Cadillac Escalade that the company pays for. Um, so if you guys want any information, text my number, the word biz, or if you just need to get healthy again, text my number on the screen the word ketones with that being said i can't wait for our late night chat and i'll talk to you guys in the next one i love you so much bye check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the diy fam here to your right